So let's talk about Jason Tatum. First off, his number is 20 in this video because Avery Bradley already stole his number zero. And Malik Monk is on the Sixers because I was too lazy to take him off the team from a video that I did from like two weeks ago. Anyway, the Celtics, apparently, according to Danny Ainge, would have drafted Jason Tatum with the number one overall pick in this draft. But they decided that they could move down and get some extra stuff while still getting their guy. This is kind of conflicting because they also wanted to do a meeting with Josh Jackson. So... Might be a little bit of BS on their part, but nonetheless, they still selected Tatum. And we have to see, is he the missing piece for these Celtics if we look at his skill set and the team he has around him? Well, I think immediately, he's a natural scorer. And if you give him a couple of seasons, he could develop himself into being a guy next to Isaiah Thomas, if Isaiah Thomas is still on the team in a few years, to where you could just give him the ball and let him go to work. So, when the Celtics are not using their style of people moving around off ball and setting screens and everybody touching it and a lot of passes and you just need a big bucket, Jason Tatum could actually help out Isaiah Thomas in that department. But if we can look at Tatum's preferences for scoring, where he was an effective uh, shot maker in college, a lot of his stuff is from mid-range, similar to like a DeMar DeRozan. He uses, one, his size, because he's like 6'7", 6'8", around there. He's pretty crafty, too. He'll hit you with some turnaround jumpers or some step backs. He kind of reminds me of, like, Joe Johnson and a guy who is not going to kill you with his athleticism. But all he needs to do is create that little angle or just get that extra inch or two of space to get his shot off. And given his height, you're not going to block it, and he's probably going to put it in the hole. So I do see the world of which he could be a guy who could really create his own shot. But it's 2000 and about to be 18. You got to be able to hit threes. He shot 34% from three in college while taking about four a game. Doesn't exactly scream out that he's a natural three-point shooter. That does not mean he can't develop that. But he's definitely going to have to because... That's just how you're going to be the most effective as a scorer in today's NBA. Unless you're just ridiculous when it comes to attacking inside, you're going to need to be able to hit from outside consistently. We're just going to have to see if Tatum can actually get to that level of being an outside shooter. But also defense. The dude ain't known for his abilities to stop opposing ball handlers, be an off-ball defensive player. It's going to take some work on that side of the floor for him. I mean, usually anyone who enters the NBA from college, especially after only playing one season, they're not going to know how to play defense in the NBA right away. But Tatum also has kind of a reputation for someone who has to really develop on that side of the floor. So I assume that it's going to take him at least a season or two to be really effective or at least being okay defensively, which of course is not good, but you're, you're willing to live with it. But how does he fit in with the rest of these Celtics? Well, Brad Stevens has this idea of positionless basketball, where every single guy on the floor can dribble, pass, shoot, as well as defend multiple positions on the other end. Which gives Stevens the ability to just do whatever the hell he wants as a head coach. Let's look at the team they have right now, one of which would be Al Horford, the big man. Horford is a guy who is good from three, around 35% from there this season. Very good mid-range shooter, can dribble the ball, average about five assists a game for the Celtics, attack mismatches in the post. I would say he is definitely the center that you would want if you really wanted to play quote-unquote positionless basketball where you can pretty much run the offense through anyone, anyone can have the ball at any time, and anybody can be taking a shot. If we go to the power forward, last season Amir Johnson was starting there. There's no way in hell that Amir Johnson fits into this idea because he can't shoot at all. Can't shoot, can't dribble, not much of a passer. I doubt he's going to be on the Celtics next season, at least as a starter. 
Jay Crowder, on the other hand, he shoots nearly 40% from outside, and he's one of the most efficient players in the NBA today while putting up about 13, 14 points a game. He's shown an ability to play the small ball four, and he also shoots around 70% at the basket, so he's not much of a ball handler, but he can definitely be a piece of an offense like that. Can Jason Tatum get to that point? Maybe. He's shown an ability to dribble, and I think his playmaking could be okay in the NBA, but it's definitely going to take some time for him to really just be that smart of a basketball player to play in that sort of a system. Also, is he going to be able to switch defensively? Because that's the other thing I mentioned a little bit. Positionless basketball goes two ways. You need to be able to run any sort of offense you want, but you also need to be able to switch everything on the other end, kind of like what the Warriors do. If we look at Jalen Brown, I think there's a world where Jalen can fit into Brad Stevens' idea. He's already a very good three-point shooter from the corners. His shooting at the top of the key is a whole different story, and he's shown some ability of being a ball handler. We're going to have to see if he can progress on that to get to the point where you could actually put the ball in his hands sometime and the defense would be forced to respect him. Avery Bradley has grown to being that of an offensive player, someone the defense pretty much always has to care about. Very good three-point shooter and has gotten better with the ball in his hands. And then, of course, defensively, he is what he is. Similar to Isaiah Thomas, I don't know if he's going to be on the team in a couple of seasons because both of their contracts are up and it's a lot of money. Who knows? But we also have to talk about rebounding because this is a thing you need to do in the NBA. Avery Bradley's a pretty strong rebounder at the shooting guard position. Jalen Brown seems like a guy who can grab boards given his height and verticality. The dude can get up there. And the Celtics are going to need a lot of strong rebounders if they really want to go to this style because they don't have one dude who averages like 11 or 12 boards a game. So it has to be a group effort when it comes to rebounding because of course Al Horford is one of the worst rebounding bigs in the NBA. Jason Tatum grabbed seven rebounds a game in college. Showed a real willingness to mix things up down low, and that'll be a good sign. I don't know. I mean, can the Celtics really have a style where just everyone can dribble, everyone can shoot, and everyone can play defense outside of Isaiah Thomas? It's a pretty daunting idea, but I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility, and Jason Tatum could fit into that. Now, Gordon Hayward definitely fits into that. Whether they actually sign him in free agency, I don't know. But if you have a team next season of, like, Isaiah Thomas, Avery Bradley, Hayward, Crowder playing the small ball four, Al Horford at the five, and then you have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown coming off the bench, there's a whole lot of versatility that Brad Stevens has at his disposal with that sort of a team. Will it actually all work out? I don't know. What is Jason Tatum's ceiling? He definitely has work to do outside shooting, defense, but he seems intriguing. 